The time has finally come. I get to go airplane camping for the very first time in my plane. Really, that's one of the biggest reasons why I got my plane is so I could do airplane camping. And it's been either too windy or too freezing cold down here in Arizona. Today it's 80 degrees. It's gonna be only like a low of 50 tonight. So tonight is the night. We have to somehow fit all of this into, let me, let me go show you. Fit it right in here, which is, well, not very much room. But I'm gonna take this up and start loading it in this way because it's a lot easier doing that. We got everything in but it's a very tight fit. I'm sure that I could probably squeeze it down or maybe get different gear, but look how tight it is. My youngest son Chaucer and it's full up. I might try to get this down a little bit further down back here, but for the most part, it is full. It's only about 45 minute flight up there at most. There's a little bit of a headwind today, but it should be nice and calm. So let's go ahead and push out, get warmed up and get out of here. I don't think I've showed you guys this yet. I ended up having to make this rudder stop so that my rudder doesn't bash back here in the wind. We have like 40 mile an hour winds coming through here and the wind actually broke my lower rod end. It pushed the rudder so hard that it actually broke it. So, lesson learned, now I keep that on at all times. Well, whoever buys this plane from me is now able to fly at night with these aero LEDs. I've got the operating limitations changed. So now it's a day and night VFR airplane. Oil pressure's coming in. We already warmed it up for the most part just because it takes about five or so minutes to warm up. Hey, King Metronic, Base Jet 68 Victor, we're out. Uh, I'm going to set him up for uh, RNAV runway 21 now. Let's go around and we'll be watching for that traffic holding out at Parkville. Okay, my traffic, Spearmall Kitfox 24 Kilo Bravo, taxi runway 03 for a northbound departure. Kingman. All right, like I was saying, we got a 45 minute flight up there. We do have a couple airplanes here in the circuit doing some RNAV stuff. We've only got about eight knots at three, three. I'll come down here and do a quick run up. Out of the way. Nobody's behind me. All right, let's go up to 4,000. And do an idle check. I've already got my trim, my flap set up. Oh, and I do have a new one here. Uh, I haven't had a chance to put it in here, but I am going to install it. It's got like 2-4 kilo Bravo on it. It lights up red for night use, um, which is really cool. But I also now have one for a Kit Fox. So this is coming out very soon to my website, and it will be customizable, which is pretty sweet. I've been wanting to do that for a long time, and I know a lot of you guys have too. So uh, transponder, harnesses. All right, if we're not airspeed alive by the 500-foot mark, we'll just go ahead and stop on the runway. Not seeing anybody. I just bring those guys. I haven't heard him say anything in the past two minutes, so I'm not seeing him up here either. Gangman traffic, Kid Fox 24 Kilo Bravo will be departing runway 03 to the north. Any traffic advice, please? Okay. Last flow check, fuel pump is on. These are good. Clear there and clear here. And it looks like the wind's pretty much calm right now. That's the wind. Alright, here we go. Airspeed's alive. Air's 40 miles an hour. I think this is probably one of the heaviest I've had this airplane yet. And yeah. Still definitely <laughs> underneath my max gross of 1550. I'm 
probably a couple hundred pounds under it, I'm guessing. But density altitude today is like 5,000 plus feet, so it definitely takes a little while to get off the ground. And when we get out of here in the morning, we're probably going to get out in the morning. Kingman traffic, Kingman 24 Kilo Bravo upwind this time, making a left-hand turn to the north, Kingman. Well, rather than just going up high and just kind of shooting a straight line, I'll bring open my iPad here in a minute just to show you guys our track where exactly we're going. We're going up the Grand Gulch Mines, BLM old mining airstrip. I've taken you guys up there, I don't know, six months ago or something like that. Really cool little place, but I haven't had a chance to bring anybody else up there with me yet. So, this is the first time. And this is the first time, like I was saying earlier, that we hit 80 degrees today. I don't think we've hit 80 yet, so I'm excited. All right, so we do have another airplane coming in. Let's just bring open this, hit record for you guys, so you guys can see where we are. Looks like the plane that's coming in is right over there at 1,700 feet higher than me. All right, so here we go. We've got mountains way out there ahead of us, and I'm guessing we have to go way up to 7,000 or so to get over those. Those are going to be bumpy. I've done it before. It's just no fun. So we're going to stay in the valley. It's just a lot smoother if you just keep in the valleys. So we're heading out basically just to the edge of the mountains straight ahead of us. Probably what, another 20 miles, 25 miles ahead of us. It's a little bumpy. Kingman Vision Jet 6 8 but we're going to break off the approach and turn right to the north here. And that should be well out of the King Airway. Uh, we're already turned to the east. We're way out of the way. No worries. Y'all have a good day. Quite hot. It is. Let me just crack this door. I love these little things that you can crack the door and get it just an inch open. And lets a lot more air in the cabin. But it also picks up my squelch a lot more. There we go. So yeah, we're going to have to go around this blue area for the Grand Canyon. That's all restricted airspace. We're not allowed in there, so we're just going to go right up to Pierce Ferry, dump around the corner, and then up to Grand Gulch. So this place, I'll show you once we get up on the ground. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice. It is um, really close to the Grand Canyon. Well, I've mentioned it in another video, and if you haven't seen the previous video, I am putting the kit box up for sale. I just didn't really want to store it for three years. I hate to get rid of it, but at the same time, and I've stored things before, it just never ends well. So I'd rather sell it, let one of you guys enjoy it. I can always pick up another airplane if I want to, but it's been a great airplane, and I've done obviously quite a few different modifications to it which I was planning on keeping it myself, and that's why I was doing all those modifications, but it's just really not worth my time just storing it for three years. So if you guys are interested, you can check down below. There should be a video of a walk around. Who knows, it might have already sold by now, I really don't know. But if you're interested in finding out what is on this plane, things like that, uh, it's a pretty sweet little airplane. As you can see, it's more of a solo camping airplane. <laughs> just the two of us is like completely packed out. I've got a buddy coming to visit tomorrow, and we wanted to go out camping in the airplane, but uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think that we're probably going to be able to fit with density altitude getting out of anywhere. We might go up to Pierce Ferry, but I don't know if we're going to do airplane camping. So some of the things you guys might notice right off the bat is I did redo the whole interior. I never did cover the instrument panel because I was waiting to get all my lights in, but um, you have to take out basically all the controls from the engine and run them back out, and I just didn't want to do all that, so I'm leaving it gray. I've got new stick handles. These ones are super nice. I've got these door and the air conditioning little things that lock the door open at about an inch open. I've got all lights. I've got LED, red LEDs up here, which are pretty awesome. That's just what I've done here in the interior. And also these little sunshades, which are eh, they're okay. I Let's take a look here. It looks like that's the ground or the elevation up there is around 4,500 feet where Grand Gulch is. So we'll have to just kind of slowly make our climb up there. You can kind of see I'm kind of having to go a little bit of the ways out of the way. Just take it around these hills up here. Otherwise, it's going to be really rough with the wind. And if for some reason we're not able to land up here, maybe it's due to strong winds or something like that. 
Then we'll come back to this other one, Pierce Ferry. It's on the, we're going to be flying right almost directly over top of it here. And it's a really cool place too, but it's just a big long gravel dirt. Just a long gravel runway. But this is where it's really nice to be able to have the Stratix right here being able to show us where other airplanes are because there's a ton, a ton of helicopters that go across Pierce Ferry and it's good to know uh, where they are because they're probably right around our same altitude. Yeah. And one zero miles. Pierce Ferry traffic, experimental kit box, 24 Kilo Bravo, one zero miles to the south, southwest. 5,300, we'll be transiting to the north for Grand Gulch area. Right ahead of us, we'll fly over Pierce Ferry. We'll take a look at the windsock if we can. Get an idea of what to expect. If for some reason it's just going to be too windy or something like that of where we're going, then we can have an idea of what our second option is if for some reason we want to come back and land down here. Yeah. It looks to only be about 10 minutes. 10 minutes past this one, so if for some reason we can't, we can just jet back here really fast in 10 minutes. But the Grand Canyon goes right up in between all those. Yeah. Pretty cool though, we can get fair the oh, cross. Oh, there's a helicopter. And Pierce Ferry traffic, Kit Fox 2 for Kilo Bravo has a helicopter in sight. We'll be passing behind you and then over the field of Pierce Ferry. Currently 5,100. Let's see if we can actually find the windsock today. This is the last time I had a really hard time even I seeing it. I think we need to turn left because uh, don't. We do. I'm just heading off to the left a little bit so that I can see straight down so I can see the windsock at this airstrip. It shows, well, it looks like there's two runways, but there really isn't. There's only, there might have been at one time, but not anymore. Yeah, well, I do not see the windsock. The windsock. It was down, part way down, on the right side. I go left. Looking at the winds up here, it looks pretty calm. I see the windsock circle, it looks like, but I don't see any windsock. That's annoying. All right, well, if we have to, we'll come back that way. We'll go around this little tiny area right here, and then we're nearly there. I pointed out in one of my other videos, there's a cement pad up on this side of a hill. I don't remember if it was right here or the next one. I think it's the next one. Nobody gave me really a good answer what they thought it might have been. And I actually have no idea what it was used for. I mean, yeah, you could think maybe a helicopter, but like there's nothing out there. So that's what I was really confused about. So I don't, I don't know. If I, it looks like there's some kind of building or fixture or something up there. I have no idea what that is. Yeah, here's a cement pad down here. When we get over it, I'll bank over so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But like there is absolutely nothing up here. I don't even know what that building is for. I don't know either. Yeah, fly like over right to it. down there. No clue. Okay, ready? See that? Yeah, what the heck? It looks like a building. I don't know. It looks like a, it has like a cement roof. All right, here's the runway right over here. We're gonna fly over first so that we can kind of get a feel for the winds and see if we can see the windsock. This is a great place to go camping, what the heck? I know, right? Look at the views. Grand Gulch Mine, Kitbox 24 Kilo Bravo, entering the circuit, Grand Gulch Mine. All right, we'll come in at 65 miles an hour today. A little bit faster. And then over the numbers, we'll slow on down to 60 miles an hour. Now, if I remember correctly, there was a windsock right by the bathroom. There is a bathroom out here too, which is, is kind of nice. I think it's a bathroom. Is this a camping place? Uh, no, it's an old mine. It's all just BLM land. They have a dirt road out here, but it, I don't know. Uh, from what I read, it's like a four hour drive out here or something. So I doubt we'll see anybody else. Like it is coming down the runway. No, it looks more like a crosswind. It's coming right up there, so it's a little bit of a left crosswind. What? There's a few buildings there. Yep, that's where the mine is. We'll walk down there later. A little bit further down, 
and then parking by that area. Oh, it looks like there's a cow at the end of the runway. Oh, shoot. <laughs> That's all right. All right, we're coming in at 65. We'll do full flaps here in a minute. All right, full flaps, checklist is complete. Probably your coolest land. Oh, the cow's moving. All right. Probably scared. Well, I touched on it really wasn't as strong a wind as I was kind of anticipating. It looked like it was more like a 12 knot kind of out of that way, but it's really more like a four knot or something like that. Ground is soft. Believe it or not, it's actually pretty soft. I'm super glad that I have the Tundra Light tail wheel over here. It's four inches wide and just glides over all this stuff so nice, which is really great. So I'm gonna do a quick walk around of the plane just to make sure, inspect for damage, things like that. Anytime I like a place like this, in case I have a rock flip up or something. Then we're gonna push the plane right over here, probably just behind me, and start setting up camp. Well, these tie downs might or might not work. My plane's pretty small. We'll try. Camp is set up. We are gonna go ahead and walk down. Chaucer's never been to this mine before. I've taken you guys down there, but it's probably about a quarter mile or so down there. We're gonna walk down there. There's some old 1920s uh, dump trucks and some other cool things. So let's head on down that way. This is the first little cabin they have here. We're gonna walk around the mine, but let me just show you in here real quick. It's actually kept really nice and clean. And thankfully, people haven't destroyed it. Dad, there's an oven out here. Nice. <laughs> what plane Huh, interesting. Huh. Very. Oh, no. This one actually looks decently still made up. So, like, these, this, this one are worse, but this one. I think better. these are from 1929. I think. I might be wrong, but I think 1929. Dad, uh, they don't have suspension, so they have that a seat. Yeah. That looks like a very uncomfortable seat. Yes, it does. Um. Ow. That's pretty wild. Yeah. What's, yeah. Well, that is pretty intact. Oh. Crazy. Yeah. Multiple ovens in it. It looks like it's four ovens. Wait, no, wait. This is my chef, Dad. No, it's not. I think it's an oven. I think it's an oven. Oh, big antique one. Yeah. Well, not really that much to look at down here. We're heading back up. We're gonna make a fire, get some dinner on. All right, Cal's at the end of the runway. All right, let's just do a last minute flow check. I got my trim, we've got our flaps. Fuel's on, fuel's on back here as well. 
<laughs> Everything's where we want to go. Let's put our wigwags on and our strobes. Maybe that'll help with the... All right, let me get it lined up so I can see down the runway. Here we go. All right, there's 35. I think tomorrow we're going to use a lot of runway. Because <laughs> we're going to have all of our weight in here as well. Definitely. <laughs> Probably use the whole one. Yeah. Well, let's come over here and take a look at this mine. We can see the place that we didn't see before. Oh, more house. Yeah, more houses. Look at this right here. Uh, I can't see. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a big old pit right there. Oh, yeah, there's a big old pit. That's cool. I didn't see that. I, I couldn't see, but I guess Oh, sweet. Good. The only thing bad about flying this time of night is you got all these black holes, which I hate. Well, from the air, but, uh, the runway looks really cool. Yeah, it does from here, doesn't it? What a view. Yeah. That was a good idea to come out. And the cool thing is, is... We've got our own mini little Grand Canyon right here. It's just outside of the Grand Canyon, so we're allowed to fly all through in this area. Here we go. Woo! That was pretty. That's awesome. Mini Grand Canyon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is really cool. Get down in here where we can see once we're down below the ridge. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> Yay! Wow, this is cool. Yeah, I'm glad we came out, for sure, this is nice. Any Grand Canyon? This is, this is quite incredible, that's for sure. All right, well, I'm gonna end it here. It's getting dark out, but man, look at this view behind me. It does not get better than this, guys. It really doesn't. I feel extremely blessed to be able to be out here with my kiddo, camping, airplane camping nonetheless. This has been a lifelong dream here, and this is my very first time ever camping with the plane, and I, I kind of wish I had a little bigger of an airplane, to be honest, but. I feel very grateful. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this and our last little sunset flight. So see you guys next time.